Lesson seven, unemployment. Hi, I'm Dave Arnott, the Christian economist. You know, we talk a lot about unemployment in economics, and it is kind of a strange language. We don't talk about employment, we talk about unemployment, but that's just the language we use. In a book that I wrote with Sergei Sadamatov called Biblical Economic Policy, we find 10 biblical economic commandments. The second one is work is good. Look, God is seen working in Genesis 1.1. We are seen working. We are supposed to work. So there is a Christian mandate to work. So now as a Christian economist, we have to figure out how does this figure into productivity that we talk about? How does it fit into GDP, some income, some other things we've talked about in previous lessons and we'll talk about in future lessons. But let's start with the assumption that work is good. See, people have traveled and changed their location for work many times. The slide you're looking at now shows how Abraham moved from Ur of the Chaldeans to a land of milk and honey. Why did he move? For work. He moved for better land. People have always moved, and Abraham is one of our early examples. And in our generations, we do as well. Why do we move? To find better work, to find better land, to produce more for our neighbors. Because if we love our neighbors, we will supply the products and services they demand. We will work, and that's how we do it. Labor flexibility. Okay, we just looked at the slide about Abraham being flexible in his selection of land and work. We believe God gives us a lot of choices. We believe that we are free to do many different kinds of work. And it is this flexibility of labor that has caused wealth, particularly in the United States, but in other Western European countries and Japan as well. When people are free to move from one job to another in a free market capitalist situation where labor is free to move, they provide more services and products for their neighbors as we're commanded to do in the New Testament. And so flexibility is the key to not only the Christian worldview in labor, but also the economic view. Because as you're free to move, from one labor source to another, you're free to create more value for your neighbors. Types of unemployment. Okay, there's three types. Structural unemployment means people are trained to do one thing, but there's jobs doing something else. Frictional unemployment is okay with us. That means people are moving from one job to another, and I'll cover that just a moment in point number four. Cyclical is the kind we don't like. Cyclical unemployment is caused by the cyclical movement of the economy. During growth stages, there's plenty of employment. During recessions, there's not as much employment. So when we say the word unemployment, usually what we mean is cyclical. Okay, there are three causes of unemployment. The first is job search. And as economists, we're okay with this. When people leave one job, they have to seek another, and there's some time period in which they're unemployed. Uh, my graduates from Dallas Baptist University, many of them don't have a job the very first day after they graduate. They have to search for a job. So this kind of unemployment we think is good because they're searching for a job that has a higher potential for creating value for their neighbors. The second cause of unemployment is minimum wage laws. After you study economics for a while, what you realize is minimum wage laws discriminate against the poor. If there's a minimum wage of $15, that means a person who produces $14.99 in value for his neighbors can't work by law. They're discriminated against. Now, I know that kind of gets your attention and you're thinking, can't we just pay them $15 an hour? Well, <laughs> One of my common statements in the classroom is, you can change economic policy, like minimum wage. You can't change economic law. There is an economic law that over the long term, you can't pay people more than the value they create. And this is what minimum wage laws do. It causes unemployment because it discriminates against people who can't produce at that value level. The third cause of unemployment is unions and their collective bargaining principles. We talked about this earlier in this session when I mentioned labor flexibility. Unions say the individual is not flexible to do their own bargaining for a price. They must bargain as a collective. What this means is people will hire fewer because they've raised the price. I mean, unions are quite clear about this. Their objective is to raise the price of labor. Well, it's very simple. If you raise the price of anything, people will buy less of it, and that includes labor. And that's why unions and their collective bargaining principles are the third cause of unemployment. The gig economy. 
I think this is fascinating and I have not found it in any of the textbooks that I've taught from nor the books I've read. Gigs mean a short-term work situation. The most popular ones are people now driving for Lyft and Uber. That's called the gig economy. Many of you are participating in gigs. If you mow your neighbor's yard, that's a gig. You're not doing it professionally. You did it for some amount of dollars for an hour or two. That's a gig. My prediction is the gig economy will grow. Why? Because I see it from an economic point of view that is more flexible labor that I talked about earlier. And from the Christian point of view, it honors work. Work is good. Work should not be constrained by governmental entities. It should be allowed the freedom to go where it wishes. This is the gig economy. Three books really quickly. The first one is called The Third Wave by Alvin Toffler. He wrote this way back in the mid-1980s. And what he said, there's three waves of our economy. In about a hundred years, it has gone from an agricultural economy to an industrial economy to an information economy. The second book is called Job Shift by William Bridges. This is about 10 years later in the mid-1990s. Bridges points out that people are shifting from the industrial to the information age. As they do so, maybe work should not be contained in 40 hours a week, about 50 weeks a year, as it was in an industrial age. Do you see how I'm progressing through and making the point that the gig economy is more in alignment with God's creational order than perhaps the employment economy? The third book you're looking at now is called Free Agent Nation by Daniel Pink. And in Free Agent Nation, Pink makes the point that gigs, those who seek free agent status, meaning doing gigs here and there, driving for Uber, driving for Lyft, maybe being a waitress part of the day, maybe cutting their neighbor's yard, that these create greater value for your neighbors than perhaps having a job. Look, there will always be jobs. Work will always be contained to some extent in jobs, meaning about 40 hours a week, 50 weeks a year. But the point of these three books is that whole structure came about in the industrial era of America, which maybe some ways went out of fashion in about 1950 or 60. And the question of these three books is, how should we work? How should we provide our labor to satisfy our neighbors? In the agricultural age, which we started with, people had work, but they weren't contained in jobs. In the industrial age, People had jobs and work was captured in that way. It was packaged in that way. Now that we're in the information age, these authors are making the point that maybe we should go back to work that is not packaged in 40 hour a week jobs. That we should do the gigs that come our way naturally, or as we as Christians would say, providentially, instead of working 40 hours a week, 50 weeks a year. To some extent, we will move to a gig economy as labor is free and flexible, and that will cause greater employment and greater satisfaction of our neighbors via the work we do. That's lesson seven, unemployment. I'm Dave Arnott, the Christian economist. Fear God, tell the truth, earn a profit. See you next time. For more information, please visit us online at DaveArnott.com. If you have questions or suggestions for future podcasts, please submit them online or in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.